All right, I'm going to do a quick little study here on the uh, doctrine of hell, another aspect of it. Um, if you saw the study on the false prophet thing, you saw that this uh, little punk kid, vigilant Christian, Mario, whatever his last name is, uh, he's come out and he said that uh, there's no proof from Scripture. And when he says Scripture, he means any version, Catholic, whatever, Vatican versions that are out there. Uh, he'll quote the King James Bible, but he doesn't believe the King James Bible is God's perfect word any more than the others are. Um, just, a, just a punk kid. Uh, man pleaser is all he is. Um, but he says, you know, I don't see any scripture, any any kind of proof that the that hell is eternal and you burn forever and ever and ever in this torture chamber and stuff like this. Very sarcastic against the word of God. He's not saved. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, and you're going to see why in this study. Uh, the eternal torment of hell is a fundamental of the faith. If you don't believe in the eternal torment of hell, as the Bible teaches, that the wicked lost are going to burn forever and ever and ever, um, you're rejecting what Jesus Christ said. You're calling Jesus Christ a liar. Uh, you can't be saved and call Jesus a liar. Right? I mean, there's so many there's so many heresies that are out there right now that you just people are just denying just it's plain it's right there the bible says it right in front of your face there's just no way around it and people say well it's right there you know it'd be like me saying well yes it's i know you say it is black it's a black book but it's not really black it's actually red with green stripes see you know i just haven't seen any proof that it's black it's to that point where people just deny what the Bible plainly teaches on this subject. It is not annihilation. You don't go to hell and burn up and you're gone. No, you get burned for all of eternity. But let's start out here. Revelation chapter 14. We're going to just go over the clearest verses on this. We're not going to go over every single little argument because you don't need to. I mean, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. All right. That's one of the standards of the Bible. All right. If there are two or three scriptures in your King James Bible that are saying the same basic stuff, then you can pretty much rely on it. Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 through 11 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Okay, stop there for a minute. Will they be tormented with fire and brimstone? Yes, it plainly teaches that. Um, how long does torment last? If God just burns them and they burn up, um, wouldn't that go pretty quickly? Well, you say, well, yeah, but we can make the argument that it's that still it's torment, even if even if it only lasts for five minutes. It still is a, a tormenting type of a thing. All right. So can we prove that it's eternal from that verse? No, not really. But let's keep reading. Verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Now this little, uh, little papist little boy, a vigilant Catholic, I call him, um, he comes out and he says, it, it's the smoke that goes up forever and ever. It's like forever and ever after more, you know? It's the smoke that goes up forever. Okay, where does the smoke come from? All right. I mean, if I take this uh, piece of paper right here and I light it on fire, then you're going to see smoke going up for a while. But when the paper is all burned up, there's no more fuel source to make smoke. If it was annihilation and you burn up quickly there, God just sends you down into the lake of fire there in eternity, and you burn up, and the smoke just go, you know, the smoke comes up, well, the smoke's going to go away. You know, unless the Lord's just going to keep a good collection of hell-bound sinners up there in heaven and just slowly feed the fire, stoke the fires of, you know, the lake of fire, just keep throwing one in at a time to make sure that the smoke goes up forever and ever. But even with that, he'd still run out. At some point in time. I mean, it's cuckooville to even question this stuff. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Now look at this. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. 
Does anybody, is anybody going to burn day and night and not burn up here on this earth? I mean, if you believe in this annihilation thing and say, well, the, the, the loss just go down, they burn, and, and they just, that's it. Um, day and night? No, it's talking about eternal. That's why it says there, forever and ever, the smoke of their torment ascendeth upward, up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. They're continually burning. Do you have any other proof than that? Oh, of course I do. Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, and with which he had, he re, excuse me, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. Look at this. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire and uh, lake of fire burning with brimstone. All right. So they were cast alive in there. Well, then they burned up pretty quickly, right? Well, if you look at chapter 20, you go down through there, and you have a thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ that comes in. Verse 7, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So this is after the thousand years. Look at verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The beast and the prophet are still there after 1,000 years of burning? 1,000 years down here on the earth? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're still there. They're still burning. And the great white throne judgment happens there from verse 11 down to 15. And all the dead that were in hell, that's their final place. They go into the lake of fire. You say, well, how is that possible? Because, you know, Jesus would have to give them eternal life. And you can't have eternal life because eternal life is for saved people. Well, what Jesus is talking about when he says eternal life is it's a reference. Life can mean, uh, you know, as far as eternity, yes. But it's also life in the sense of, you know, you say get a life. That doesn't mean that you're dead and that you need to become alive. All right. You say to somebody get a life, it means enjoy things and have a good life and stuff like that. That's what it's talking about. He'll give them eternal life. It's eternity, plus it's also all the, the rewards that come at the judgment seat of Christ and eternity in heaven, God wiping away all tears and, and no more temptation to sin and you get an incorruptible body. That's the eternal life it's talking about there. But all people have, they will live forever. They're, they are immortal beings in the sense of once God creates you, you live forever. The destination is what's in question here. Mark chapter 9, verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. What would be the point of having a fire that's never quenched if all the people burn up? Verse 44, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. You say, wait a second, their worm dieth not? What does that mean? Well, without going into a huge big study on this, I believe that when we go to heaven as Christians, we will be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches that. We will look like Christ. We will think like Christ, be like Jesus Christ. All right? But what did Jesus say about lost people? Ye are of your father, the devil. So, as Christians conform to the image of Jesus Christ, lost people conform to the image of their father, Satan. And the Bible calls him a serpent. What, is, what if uh, in eternity, lost people take on the image of a red worm, a red snake? so to speak. How about that? Wouldn't that be weird? So you would have their worm talking about lost people. They become worms in eternity down there frying in hell. We get an incorruptible body 
that's conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, and their body is an eternal worm for all of eternity. Isn't that something? Verse 45, And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Now, if you have a new version, again, it's going to take out verses 44 and 46. They just knock those verses out. Why? Well, because the people that took them out are going to hell, and they didn't like to see three times there. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. They don't like that. So they just decide we'll just knock two verses out. Interesting. But why would Jesus say, I mean, if you're just going to burn and God says, okay, I've cut you off from my love. You're out of fellowship with me. And I'm going to have to burn you. You're going to die and I'm going to burn you and you're going to be dead in about five minutes. Don't worry, I have mercy. Even in judgment, I have mercy. You know, um, if, if, you know, in this vigilant little Catholic guy, he's at the end of it, he says, Daddy wouldn't do this. Speaking about God. Um, <laughs> he doesn't know the Lord. But you see, why on earth would Jesus make such a serious warning if people just burn up? He's not. You aren't just burning up. You burn forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And it's just, we, we can't even fathom how bad it's going to be. A couple more places to go to here. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. You say, well, I just don't understand why a loving God, why, why would a loving God send people to a place like that where they got to burn for all of eternity? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, well, here's why he did it. Matthew 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. The devil is what the Lord created. The fires of the lake of fire ultimately, but hell was created for the devil and his angels. If you decide to follow the devil with your life, then you're going to go join him for all of eternity. And you're going to be like your father, the devil. It's as simple as that. You know, and there's a whole bunch more arguments we go over, but you know, you don't need to. You don't need to do huge big studies on this stuff to just be able to show people the Bible says forever and ever. They're tormented forever and ever. Isaiah 33 verse 14. This is where we're going to end. This is a good verse for... Uh, the vigilant uh, Christian. Start in uh, verse 13. Hear ye that are far off what I have done, and ye that are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fear fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? Nobody will. You think that you're going to get down there to hell and, and just be like, oh, it's not too bad. You know, I'll just be down here burning forever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's going to be really bad. And the hypocrites of today that are denying what Jesus said in his word what this book plainly teaches, those who deny it and say, oh, it's just annihilation. You don't need to worry about it. It's not that bad. Uh, they're hypocrites. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. You see? They're false professions that come out of their mouth that say, oh, I'm a Christian. I put my faith in Jesus. I just don't believe what He says in His Word. When He calls it everlasting burning, it doesn't really mean everlasting. When it says that they're going to burn forever and ever, it doesn't really mean that then you're calling Jesus a liar. Hypocrite. 
You're not saved if you have those feelings about the Lord. You say, well, I just don't understand why I love God. Okay, then the Bible says that you're a bastard. Who's a bastard? A bastard is somebody that doesn't know their father. I have no problem with understanding God in this book. I mean, when you get out in the world and you see what's really going on and you see how wicked people are and everything else, I say to myself, would God be just in burning these people forever? Yeah. And you know one of the main reasons why I know that? Because God would have been just in burning me forever. If I had died years ago before I got saved and stood before the Lord and the Lord said, am I just in sending you to hell to burn forever? I would have said, yeah. You know what all I've done. You know those secret things. You've read my thoughts all my life. You've seen. I can't hide anything from you. Yeah, yeah. Lord, if you want to send me to hell and burn me forever and ever and ever, torture me forever, yeah, you'd be just doing it. That's why I got saved. And when I got saved, I came broken. I came in repentance, not as some little smart aleck that says, well, I just don't believe in that. I don't believe in I don't like that part of the scripture because daddy wouldn't be that way. I got a big problem with that. This little punk makes his living off of talking about Illuminati blood sacrifices and Illuminati this, Illuminati that, and people go, oh, he's such a great teacher of the word of God. You are blind if you think that that vigilant Christian kid is a great teacher of the Word of God. Anybody that denies the eternity of hell, eternal torments of hell, anybody that denies it is lost. You can't be saved and just deny something that's so plain in the Scriptures. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.